Okay. Okay, so did we talk about uh, vector versus scalar? Okay, so let's say you go from point A for point B. So let's say you have a cockroach here taking a walk, you know, chilling out. Okay, nothing to eat here. Okay, let's check here. Oh, okay, there is a crumb here. Okay, go this and that and there and here and end up here. In physics, what we call the distance, it's going to be the length of that path. Okay, so that will be the distance. So the, the distance is a scalar, meaning it has a magnitude and a unit. So means uh, how much distance was covered. Maybe it's going to be in inches for a cockroach, could be in meters or miles. So that will be the distance, okay? So physics is like in the real world. The distance is how much distance is covered during a given time from A to B. So you can use, for example, this device, maybe a miniature of it, and you will find that distance here. It's a scalar. However, there is something called a vector. Okay, A vector, in that case, will be the displacement. So how do we find displacement in physics? You start from the starting point A, and you connect to the ending point B, and you have an arrow here. So A, B is a mathematical object that we call a displacement, okay? Because it's going to tell you how much of what and which way. So if I say I drive 30 miles per hour, you know, or I, I drive 30 miles from BBC, I'm not going to give you any information which way I went. So that's going to be uh, distance, 30 miles. What did I say? 30 miles per hour? 30 miles. So if I drive 30 miles, it's a distance. But if I say I, I, I drive 30 miles north or northeast, northeast, that's a displacement. Okay. So in physics, what we call a displacement, it's when you connect your starting point and to the ending point. That's your displacement. Okay. The distance is just how much distance was covered. Is that clear? So here we are in two dimensions, but when we are in one dimension, that's easy. So let's take examples to understand. So here we have the number line. So in kinematics, you're going to use the position on the number line. You're going to use the time. So when do you start your stopwatch? When you're going to uh, uh, stop the stopwatch? You have the origin here. You're going to define how fast it's moving, how fast it's getting faster. So we're going to define the position at a given time, the velocity at a given time, the acceleration at a given time, and the time elapsed. So let me show you. If, if, you, say, if you say you start from here, so that will be your point A, okay, and you end up here. Your displacement, the notation will be delta x. You can even put an arrow here. That will be the displacement. So what's going to be the displacement? In that case, it's going to be easy. It's just going to be you go from here to there, 3. But I put a plus here, 3, 3 meters, for example. The plus means you went to the height, okay? It's pointing to the height. I could also say three meter at height. So this is called a displacement and it's a vector. Now, what's the distance in that case? Distance, yeah, it's easy, right? It will be also three meters. But notice that the displacement has, of course, how much a unit of what and which way. A distance just has a magnitude and a unit. Is that clear? So now let, let's do, if I go from A, so I start at A, and now I want to go to that position here. So I call that, I don't know, C. So you connect the starting point to the ending point, okay? You put that in, with an arrow. 
So what do you think the displacement is? Negative 2. Because the negative is telling you it moved, the position is, is toward the left, okay? You moved toward the left. So we're going to write the delta x, so the displacement e equals um, minus 3 meters or 3 meters at left. Is that clear? So displacement and distance are not the same mathematical object. In that case, what's the distance? What, what, who says 3? Yeah, you confuse me here. It's 2, right? Mm -hmm. uh, 1, 2. So uh, it's minus 2 or 2 meters to the left. And what's the distance? It's just 2. Is that clear? Question. Yeah. What's happened to the delta? What about the change of the final line? Yeah, that, so, so that will be the displacement. If you are on the number line, which is in one dimension, so the displacement, okay, has a very simple definition. It's just going to be the final position minus the initial position. And of course, you have somewhere origin here. So in that case, what is your final position? Huh? Negative 3, okay. Minus. Uh, negative one. Okay, you remember minus and minus, you know, enemy of your enemy is your friend. So that's going to be minus three plus one. So it's going to be minus two. So only in one dimension, okay, when you are using a number line, then you can use that definition of displacement in one dimension so that was a good question in one dimension the displacement is just the final position minus the initial position it's just telling you which way did you go did you go to the left or did you go to the right okay the distance is just the distance in the real world so you know just the distance is two is that clear so on the number line we can define here the position at a given time. So let's, I don't know, it should start over. So we can define the position at a given time. So for example, here, maybe I start. Um, the motion here. So let's say I start the motion here. So that means my stopwatch here is zero. Okay, so I let the time run by. And here I'm going to stop the stopwatch. That will be T. So maybe it's three seconds, for example. So then here, that position here, it's called the position at a given time T. Okay, so that will be the position on the number line at a given time. Is that clear? That position here, has, how can we call it when you start, start your stopwatch at t equals zero? Initial position, very good. So the position here, it's called the initial position. So you can put x sub zero. Some book, you can call that initial position. This is understood to be the final position. Okay, so it could be x at time t or the final position here, or just x at time t. The time between here and there, that's called a time elapsed. And uh, if you go from here to there, for example, that can be your displacement delta x. Okay, so let's say you start, so what's your position here, for example? Very good. So position here is uh, 2.5 meters. You start here. You don't have to start. This is your home here, but you don't have to start here. So what's your displacement? 
R, 4.5 you all the way, and I'm going to put a plus here to remember that it's a vector because you move to the right, okay? But it doesn't mean that my final position is 4.5, so don't confuse the displacement and the position. My position is 2.5 meters because it's going to tell me how far I am from home, but the displacement is 4.5 meters. Uh, I just counted. So you, you start here, you end up here. So 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 4.5. Or, or you could say displacement is the final position minus initial position. So the final position is 2.5 minus initial position is minus 2. So it's going to be 2.5 plus 2, so it's going to be 4.5. That will be your displacement. So it's just that in physics, distance is not the same as displacement. Displacement is a vector, so you need to connect the starting point here to the ending point. But in, in 1D, it's easy, okay? You just do final position minus initial position, okay? Yeah. Um, so 2.5, what is 2.5? It's the position on the number line. So you have the number line, that's the origin, that's position 1, position 2, position 2.5 is when you stop, stop your stopwatch. Okay? How do you know like, what step to make for each quiz and how many to do? You always have to do all those steps that you do. No, that, that's just an introduction. You, ha you, you will have equations, and it depends on the unknown and, and the known, right? So with the, we, we're going to work with uh, what is called kinematic equations, and kinematic equations will involve uh, position at a given time. It will involve initial position at t equals zero, it will involve velocity, which is also a vector at a given time. It will involve the initial velocity, you know, when you start your stopwatch, how fast you are going, you know. And it will also involve acceleration. Acceleration will be a constant. You don't have to worry about that. And of course, the time, the time elapsed. So we're going to have equation, you know, that how can you find a the, the position, if you know the time, and if you know the velocity. And of course, you have the displacement. Okay? So if uh, you are in uh, two dimension, next time, same thing, you have the starting point, you start your stopwatch, you take a walk on the far side, dark side, you're choo -choo 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 -choo, you end up here. You connect those points, that will be your displacement. It's a vector, how much of what, which way. So it could be, I don't know, uh, the length here could be uh, 10 inches, 10 inches at uh, 30 degrees north of east. And the distance will be just that distance here. And that will be a scalar. Okay? Are you with me? Just, uh, it's like learning a new language, okay? It's nothing, nothing special about it. So if you start at x equals 3, so that will be your position, and you end up at minus 5, what's going to be your displacement? You start here, you go there. Now you, you go from here, boom. Negative 8, negative 8. So the displacement is negative 8 units, could be inch or it could be a meter, right? So that's your displacement. So it's going to be how much 8 of what unit? One unit is just one square. Which way? To the left. But the distance, the distance is just 8 units. Is that clear? So a tricky question that I like to ask, you know, for a test or whatever, you start from here, 
you go you come back to the same place what's going to be your displacement zero very good okay because there is no connection between the starting point and the end point of course your distance is not zero okay of course you are tired you come back to the same place but your displacement is zero that's that's how physics that's when half of the class drop out and then no just kidding yes yes very good distance cannot be negative because it's a magnitude and a unit displacement can be negative yes how do you know the starting point okay because i it's supposed is here because i put an arrow here because i i don't know why when i change my slide uh, that doesn't show up but there is an arrow here to the left yeah so the start the, the head of the arrow is always the last point so for example you start at minus three so it doesn't have to be left or right it could be up or down so if you start at minus three and you end up at two so what's going to be the displacement so you can say final position minus initial position so it's going to be what five okay two minus minus three so two plus three is five you can see that here if you start at minus three here and you end up at two you make an arrow pointing up so it's going to be five five units up or plus five units is that clear so if you have a dis displacement of negative 10 that means you are going down so minus 10 okay so that means you are going down and the displacement is five where do we end up uh, initial position is minus 10 and the displacement is 5 it's going to be ne negative 5 right because you go up so initial position here is minus 10 displacement is 5 means you go up 5 so minus 10 plus plus uh, minus 10 plus 5 is 5 okay minus 10 plus 5 negative 5 A negative 5 Okay, so you minus minus 10 you go up by 5 so you end up at negative 5 thank you okay okay uh so in in one dimension it's not big deal all you have to do displacement is final position on the number line minus initial position okay so for example you start at a you end up at b uh, final position is minus six initial position is three so minus six minus three is minus nine so your displacement is negative nine is that clear it's a vector how much nine of what units which way left but the distance is just nine so if you take one day uh, calculus three then you learn about scalar and vector it's just a mathematical object that were uh, introduced just for the sake of physics and you know everything is physics even biology is physics so you need physics yes yes to the right of the map, so it's no, no, zero, zero. Because you go back, nya, 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 same place. You don't know which way you want. So to tell the difference between that distance and the displacement would just be the units, like so, zero meters. So you just yeah, you can say zero meters. Yes. So just to make sure, when you're doing distance, distance always has to be positive, even though yes, the displacement can actually be negative. So displacement can be negative, positive, or zero. Distance can be zero or positive. Cannot be negative. That's what a scalar is. So for example, energy. Energy, uh, 300 calories. Is that a scalar or is that a vector? 
do you say I'm eating 300 calories, 30 degrees at north of east? Is a scalar. Okay. Time could be a, a vector if we can go back, back in time. Wouldn't it be nice? But we can't. So, so far, as, as far as I know. So, time is a scalar. Now, a force, what about a force? Uh, does it matter if I push this way or that way or that way? Yes, right? You won't get the same consequence. So, a force is a vector. Okay, how much in pound, for example, five pound? Five pound which way? Are you lifting or are you doing the opposite? Right? So, the direction matters. So, a force is a vector. A velocity is a vector. Did you go 30 miles per hour to the right or did you go 30 miles per hour? To the left and we we're going to see that a speed is not a vector the scalar because there is no direction where well, we talk about that okay so that's the idea that will be your initial position on the number line that will be the final position on the number line when you connect them together connect them here with an arrow that will be your displacement Okay, and that will be between here and there, that will be the time elapsed. Okay? So, for example, uh, you can add vectors. So, for example, if you push five pounds, two persons are pushing five pounds. If there is a car push, one is pushing five pounds, the other one is pushing five pounds. When you add them up, it's, go, it's going to be 10 pounds. Okay? You add vectors. So here, if I move five miles to the right, and then I go back five miles, what's going to be my displacement? Zero. The distance is 10. If, uh, if someone is pushing 10 pounds and the, the other one is pushing five pounds, two, two vectors, what's going to be the sum? 15 pounds. Okay, so here's some idea if I move 5 miles to the right and 10 miles to the left, what's going to be the displacement? Five. Very good, negative 5. Okay, but uh, it's like you are five, 5 units away from home, you say, but the distance is 15. Okay, someone is eating something that smells good. It's, it smells sugar. So 5 to the right, 15 to the left, that's going to be negative 10. That's going to be your displacement, but the distance, it's going to be 20 if we are talking about moving, right? And up and down, the same thing. So up and down, if uh, you have a parachute, okay, it's moving at a constant speed. So there is, uh, what are the forces acting on the parachute, moving on a constant speed? Gravity, the weight. And then you have the air resistance, the lift, right? So if the lift equals gravity, what's going to be the uh, resultant, the total force? Zero. Okay, 1,500 pound up, 1,500 pound down, zero. So there is no net force. And when there is no net force, there is no acceleration. So something that have, you have to remember is that if there is a net force, that means you have an acceleration. That means it's speeding up, slowing down, or turning. If there is no net force, there is no acceleration. Because acceleration can be understood two ways. It's how fast something is getting faster. Okay? So, and, um, like, Let's take an example. When, when you drop something and there is no resistance, is it moving at a constant speed or is speeding up? Speeding up. So it's about 22 miles per hour per second. That's the acceleration due to gravity. So if you are standing on top of the building, after one second, you're going to go 20 miles, 22 miles per hour. Another one second, so two seconds altogether, how fast you're going to go? 44. Not bad. You can hit the floor. Okay, you can survive. Three seconds of falling. 
66, start to be bad. And four seconds, 88. My point is that acceleration, meaning how fast you are getting faster, okay? 22, uh, every second I increase the speed by 22 miles per hour, just to give you an idea what acceleration. But if, they have, if you have an acceleration, that means there is a force, right? So what force is acting on it? Gravity. So actually, actually acceleration is the force per unit mass. If there is an acceleration, that means there is a force. And the acceleration and the force need to have the same direction. So if the force is this way, this way, so I push someone this way, that person is going to speed up that way. Okay, so we'll get back to that, just an introduction. So displacement. Okay, so let's talk about relative velocity. So, yes. Um, which one? Forgot. <laughs> so if, if, if you have an acceleration, that means there is a force involved. Okay, so for example, if I push someone in this direction, that person is going to speed up in that direction. If my kid starts to run away from me, yeah, try to escape, and I grab the kid, the kid is still moving, but I grab the kid, right? Where is the force? Toward me, but the kid is going that way. So the acceleration will be toward me. If I pull a kid, okay, if I pull in this direction, the acceleration will be here, even though it's moving in that direction. So it's slowing down, it's slowing down, or the kid is slowing down, even though it's moving in this direction. Yeah. It's the same velocity. Huh? What if it's the same velocity? Like when the, the car is going that way, uh. it's going that way. Does that mean it's going to be slow? So we, we're going to talk about that here, the, the, the relative velocity. So you mean if, if the kid is going in this direction and I'm going in the opposite direction, so we are not moving, right? The velocity will be, so we, we, it's interesting. We're going to talk about that here. So relative velocity. So I told you the first lecture that everything depends on your frame of reference, right? So that was introduced long time ago. One of the founding fathers of uh, physics is Galileo Galilei. In uh, 1632, uh, he, he wrote uh, that famous book that got him in trouble with the church because inside that book, he said that um, the earth is going around the sun and not the other way around. But he was fine, don't worry, because he had connection. But in that same book where he supported the Copernicus uh, system, he also talked about relative velocity. So he's the first one. Velocity depends on your frame of reference. So let's say that you have two cars here. This one, now let's say this one, this one is easier, right? So this one is moving 25, let's say it's miles per hour. This one is moving 35 miles per hour. From my point of view, Outside, I see the car moving at 35 miles per hour to the left. So we're going to say the velocity is negative 35 because velocity we're going to see is also a vector. From my point of view outside, on the sidewalk, we say, oh my gosh, something bad is going to happen here. This one is moving to the right and the, the, the velocity is positive 25, yes? But let's say you are in the car. What's going to be the velocity from your point of view of the green car? Faster. Exactly. It's going to be 25 plus 35. So it's going to be uh, 60, if I know how to count, 60 miles per hour, right? You see, because the collision will happen faster than if that was not moving. So from the point of view of this car, that car is moving 60 miles per hour relative to you inside the, the red car, but it's moving at 35 miles per, per hour relative to someone outside. Is that clear? <laughs> no? Like, if you're moving and a car is going to collide with you, is it going to take less time or more time than if you're just moving and that car is not moving? 
less time. Okay, so it means it's moving faster relative to you. The collision will happen faster. Okay, if you do this versus that. So the relative to this car, this one is moving faster. You can see that when you are driving on, on the opposite line, you see the car moving towards you. And it's like they are moving really fast. You say, oh, he's uh, going over the speed limit. But he's not. It's just because you are moving also and he's moving towards you. So it increases the speed relative to you. Right? What about if, if you are following each other? This one is going 30 miles per hour. This one is, is going 30 miles per hour. From your point of view, the velocity is zero because it doesn't get closer, it doesn't get further away. So from your point of view, it's the same distance. Okay, so the velocity is zero, right? Yes. Six, six, oh, okay. So then if you, if you take in account the which way, so for one will be positive 60, the other one will be negative 60, if you decide which way you are going. But if we talk just about the relative speed, both of them, they are in trouble because it's going to be 60. From someone outside, it's going to be 35 here, 25 there. So everything depends on your frame of reference. So for example, this one is going 60, this one is 55. So it's it's not like it's at rest, it's moving away. So what's the relative speed here? So 60, but it's moving away. So it's gonna be, you don't add them up, right? Because they are don't close, getting closer, they're moving away. Five, very good, it's gonna be five. The relative, the relative speed is gonna be five because that means it's it's going to take uh, less time to catch up so and all, all that it was um, thought through by galileo on um, when when he was take he, he lived in uh, pa padoue i think he was uh, like next to venice he will take a ship to venice and he was thinking about all of that by by observing the ship because of course at the time he didn't have a car okay Yes. Five miles. Yes. Out. Yes, exactly. So, for example, if uh, um, make more sense if you think of that, okay? Uh, you you all have been in an airport and you have a side uh, side sidewalk here yeah, that is running a running sidewalk yes so if someone is looking at you that person here is looking at you this here that belt here is moving at five miles per hour and you are moving you know those, those people are very annoying you know they don't move and you cannot <laughs> <laughs> but if that person was moving that's moving at five, you are moving at 10. So from here, how, how fast you're moving? 15, okay, it make, it make more sense thinking of that than with a car, you're gonna go faster. Okay, so not only you are taking a, a moving sidewalk, but on top of it, you, you walk or, or you run, so you're gonna get there faster, right? So you, you add and, and so, so, the distance that you have to cover will be um, will be the same from here to there, but you're going to cover it in less time. So relative to here, you have more speed than if you just rest, uh, stay at rest. So if this is moving 10 miles per hour, you are moving five miles per hour relative to the sidewalk. So you're going to add up the velocity, right? Because you're going to get there faster. Does that make sense? What if you move backward now? So it's going to be five, right? If this is moving at uh, 10 and uh, and you are moving backward at five, relative to here, you're just moving at five. It cancel out. 
So let me something ask you something that uh, I think connect to what you say. Uh, relative to here, imagine this is moving at 10 miles per hour and you start running at 10 miles per hour, but in the opposite direction, zero. So from that person, you are not going anywhere. It's like in a cartoon, you know, they, you are running on place, um, not, not going anywhere, you see? So the, the, the relative speed like add up. Like yes, exactly. Oh, yes, that's a good question. I didn't think of that. I should have that in my slide. A treadmill. You see those videos who wants to, to make the bus and TikTok or whatever. So if, you, if they run backward, and if you do it the right way, at the right speed, the same speed as the conveyor belt, you are not going anywhere. You, you're going to be at the same position, right? Yes. Does that mean there's still force? Oh, uh, force has a, it's not involved here. Of course, of course, there is a force. There is a force that moves the conveyor belt. It's a constant speed. So that means the net force is zero. So there is an engine of force pushing the conveyor belt, and then you have friction, so it cancel out. And then um, if you are moving at a constant speed, that means you also have friction. So the net force will be zero in that case. If, if it's moving at a constant speed, there is no force, no acceleration. Okay? So velocity all depends on where you're looking from and how fast you're going. So could there ever be a question that's like, uh, what is just her velocity? Her relative velocity to the side. For, so for that example, you're saying if you're looking from the sidewalk, her relative velocity is just like she's walking 50 miles an hour. Yes. But it doesn't change her actual velocity in terms of how fast she's moving. Yes. Okay. So that means you, you need to specify the frame of reference. Example, you have the ground and you have the wind. So you have an airplane here. The airplane is moving at a speed, let's talk about speed. Uh, no, actually, let's talk about velocity. Velocity has a direction. So the airplane is moving 100 kilometers per hour relative to the wind. So relative to the train, treadmill, right? So relative to the mill, to the treadmill, or to the wind, that's the velocity, yes? But you have wind, you know, pushing back here. So relative to the ground, what's going to be the velocity? 80, okay? So I have, there is an engine which is designed to move at a speed of 100, but then you have a head wind moving, pushing in the opposite direction at 20. So from my perspective, my speed relative to the wind or the treadmill is 100, but relative to the ground, I have to subtract them. So if you have an airplane moving at 100 and you have a wind, a head wind moving at 100, it's not going to move. It's not going to go anywhere, like the treadmill. So if you have a ferry, for example, with a, um, trying to go over a river, it's going to be the same thing, right? If the river is moving five miles per hour and, and the boat is moving five miles per hour, you're not going to go anywhere. You, you know that because when you try to run and you have a lot of wind, it's like you are not going anywhere. Like, hmm? A running back? Oh, yes, yes, exactly. Exactly. You have those crazy things where you attach the parachute to yourself and you try to run and then it slows you down, so you are moving at a constant speed. So the two two velocity cancel each other. Yes. 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 My speed, my speed relative to the wind will be one hundred. So it depends. Your it it. I I think that. Uh, if you take the example of the treadmill, I think it's a good example. So it's it depends where you are located. So if you are on train mill, a giant train mill, and it's it's moving really fast. So let's say you are running here, 
and and I don't know you're running 10 miles per hour you are running relative to the treadmill so the frame of reference here is attached attached to the treadmill it's you are pushing on the treadmill here so 10 miles per hour relative to the treadmill but if the treadmill is also moving at 5 miles per hour for someone located here so that's a frame of reference and you are looking at your front the speed is 15 it's going faster and you know that because if you stop running what's going to happen boom right so if you stop running you are moving at 5 and then you add 10 so that's going to be 15 okay so here 10 relative to the treadmill okay 15 relative to outside so the 100 relative to the wind and the 80 relative to the ground so not just still moving because it's saying the plane is moving at 80 miles an hour no 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 it's the plane is moving at 100 it's it's like let's take another example it's like swimming okay so if if you swim here it's you swimming you are swimming but the water is moving opposite to you so you swim you push the water right so you push the water at 100 km per hour if i put you some kind of engine here but the water is flowing in the opposite direction so relative to someone on the shore, you are going at 80, okay? So you, you are pushing on the water, the water is pushing on you, so it's relative to the water. In that example, the, the engine, why, why is it flying, by the way? Because you push, you push on the wind, the wind push back, on, or air, you are pushing on the air, the air push back on you, it's action, reaction. It's, it's going to be 100 because that's how fast you are pushing the the air back yes so the plane is going at 100 relative to the air let's say relative to the air to the atmosphere to the ground it's moving at 20 and it's the wind 20 is the wind relative to the ground so it's easier to think of uh, swimming. Think of swimming. Okay, you are swimming 100 relative to the water, but the water is moving. You know, you have current, and it's um, what do we call those very dangerous currents in the ocean? Rip turn. Exactly what's happening, right? So they say you should not fight it, okay? Because if you fight it, it's worse. So relative to the shore here, to the beach, you are going at 80. Okay, so let's take an example. So here you have a dock and uh, you are moving two miles per hour relative to the barge and the barge is moving at three miles per hour. So relative to the dock, how fast you are going? Five, very good, right? Does it make sense? Because you're gonna cover more distance. What about if you do that? So it's moving at three and you are moving back two. It's, it's gonna be one okay you're not going relative to here you are not moving away as fast okay uh, yeah you can so relative to here you are moving a positive one relative to here you are positive one um, another principle of uh, galileo uh, in his book he had the old title it's called dialogue concerning the two chief world system and he also says that there is no way you can tell if you are in a moving frame of reference if it's moving at a constant speed so it means if you are in an airplane you know and the airplane is moving at a constant speed you you if, if you shut down all the windows you don't know if you are moving or not there is no way are, are you on land or are you in the sky you cannot know the only way you know you are moving, it's when what? What's, what's happening in an airplane? 
Acceleration, when you are ac accelerating, so if you landing up or landing uh, on the ground, but if you are moving at a constant speed, there is no way you can tell. If you are in a train moving at a constant speed and there is another train, you don't know which one is moving. Didn't that happen to you when you take a train? You don't know if you are moving, the other train is moving, right? So there is no way. Yeah, there is no experiment you can do to tell if you are moving, if it's moving at a constant speed, right? Interestingly, Einstein, when he developed special relativity, it started from, from here. Start to think about that. Okay, so there is a video. So I cannot uh, show you the whole video. I will put that in uh, Canvas. But he did that crazy thing. So not to do. He did the treadmill, but he did the treadmill, right? So if you're moving, the treadmill is moving at a given speed, you 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 run, you run at the same speed. It's not, it's like you are not moving, right? So he did that, he did that experiment. Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing what at the same speed. I don't know how it works. Is that right? Hey everyone, today we're going to be seeing what happens if you're on a moving vehicle and you run backwards and jump off the back at the exact same speed that the vehicle is moving but in the opposite direction, will you just land still on the ground? Land still on the ground because relative to the ground there is no speed. Holy cow, this is so not to do, okay? I told you if you do experiments, I give you yeah. in my car. Okay, so why didn't I fly off the trailer when I jumped up when we were driving at a constant velocity there? Well, the reason. So, do you see he's jumping? He's jumping because it's moving at a constant speed. Nothing happens. He goes back to the same place, right? Because relative to the platform, the platform is moving at a constant speed, so it's going to land at the same place. Okay, so why didn't I fly off the trailer when I jumped up when we were driving at a constant velocity there? Well, the reason is because I'm moving at the same speed as the vehicle, and besides the wind resistance, which was negligible, there's no reason why I should suddenly slow down and be pushed off the back of the vehicle. For example, you can see what I mean when I show you a small-scale version of this. So this is a vehicle that shoots a steel ball up as it's driving. And you'll see that as it starts driving and shoots the steel ball up, and it's going to land exactly where it shot off in the vehicle. But from its reference frame, it's just going popping up and going back down. So depending on your reference frame, its location profile is different, either a straight line up and down or a parabola. Okay, so here's how we're going to do this. So I have my drag on the ground. Oh, cow, oh, this is fast. So if, you, if the car goes much faster during the time it's moving at a constant speed, it's fine. It's just you have to run very fast. So then if the car breaks, then you are in trouble because you, you're doing this. It only works if it's moving at a constant speed. <laughs> oh man, that is so cool. It's like I'm sprinting and then all of a sudden I'm just standing still. <laughs> Oh man, if I don't get it right, I'm afraid I'm just going to start tumbling backwards, but I got it right then. I don't know how I'm able to adjust for it, but somehow I look over at the camera and kind of match it, and then I can match it just fine and land there. And I think that's... So moving at a constant speed, it's fine. It doesn't work when you if you start okay you're gonna fall backwards if you stop you're gonna fall forward so i will put the video
Okay, so let's go back to the physics here. Um, difference between displacement and distance, and we also have a difference between speed and velocity. So speed is a scalar, okay, so you, it's moving at 25 meters per second, it doesn't say which way it's moving, but velocity is a vector. So if it's moving to the right, velocity is going to be positive, okay, and the displacement from here to there is positive, and if it's moving to the left, velocity is going to be negative, and the displacement is negative. Is that clear? So average speed, it's going to be the distance divided by the time, like in real life, but the average velocity, it's going to be the, velocity, the displacement divided by the time. So it's weird because in physics, what did I say? If you go come back to the same place, the displacement is zero. So then the average velocity will be zero, which makes totally no sense. But that's the terminology. That's how it goes. Okay, let's let's try to do some uh, here. Um, okay, let's try uh, number four. So all those, uh, for those who join the class, you know, all, all those slides have tutorials in my, uh, in my Dropbox. So you can uh, talk to each other, help each other, see if you can, this one is easy. Just making, making it big, I have trouble with that. I don't know how to do it. But in, in the meantime, you have my slides, you know, everything is on my... So I don't understand why it does that. That's a new thing. I've never seen that before. Yeah. Okay, so it, it, it depends. It's a good question. Usually, uh, usually, for example, if this is east and that will be west. So instead of having positive and negative, then you can have uh, east and west. And instead of having, well, that will be the x-axis here, or you can do east-west, or you can have north and south, so that will be negative here for the y-axis or positive. Oh yeah, because I put north. Okay, so north will be positive. So you go five blocks north. So you just, so because you are in 1D, when you want to find the displacement, okay, uh, displacement, no, no, I'm going to call that from A to B, you, you just add numbers like they were integers. So if you go five up, one, 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 not a positive five, and then you go 10 down, you put a minus five. So that's going to be negative five. negative five or five, I should say, how much five of what blocks which way south? So you start from here, that's your starting point. You go 10 down, 10 blocks down, and then you go up five. So the displacement will be how far you are from home. This is your home here. So how far? That will be A, B. That will be your point B. You, you are five blocks south of your starting point. How far you are from your starting point? So, so the idea is how far you are from your starting point, that will be your displacement, and, and you are far, uh, you are south. So the displacement will be negative five or five blocks at south. So let's do the weird things now. Oh, by the way, what, what's the distance? 15. Distance has to do how tired you are. We are very tired. 15 blocks, New York City, upper, uh, upper west side, big blocks, what? distance. Negative. Um, okay, so it depends. 
it's it's good question. It depends on your um, uh, e either you say plus or minus. Either you decide, okay, this is north and this is south. Okay, so you can say either minus five blocks or you can say five blocks at south. This one will make more sense because I talk about north and south. So the distance will be 15 blocks, yes? Not the average, the, the wheel that will um, make students drop at that point. If you want to find the average velocity, I'm going to put a bar here just to say it's average. By definition, it's going to be the displacement divided by the time. Okay, so that's the definition of velocity. It's, it's just a definition, like uh, bonjour is high, velocity is displacement divided by the time. So what's going to be the displacement in that case? Negative 5. I should put AB because I put AB before. So it's going to be negative 5 block um, at south. No, I should put uh, 5 blocks at south. And what's the time? 30 minutes, let's say half an hour. So what's going to be the velocity? 5 divided. When you divide by 0 0.5, you multiply by 2. So it's going to be? Oh yes, so it's either negative 10 or 10 blocks south. So 10 blocks at south. Uh, no, blocks per hour. I forgot about the unit. So either you say 10 blocks uh, per hour at south, or you say minus 10 blocks per hour. But just to annoy students, you know, it's a weird definition. Velocity is displacement divided by time. Now, the speed. What's going to be the speed, average speed? 15, very good, 15 um, divided by 0 0.5, which is 30. So it's going to be 30 block per hour. That makes sense. That's just a matter of definition. Velocity depends on the displacement. So if you are moving to the left, the velocity will be to the left. If you are moving to the right, the velocity will be to the right. Okay? Very good. The speed, like here, we say the average speed will be the distance divided by the time. So if you go from here, you go boom, that will be all that distance divided by the time. The velocity will be you have to connect A to B, so it will be that length here, how much, divided by the time. That will be the definition for velocity. Okay? And uh, do, do remember uh, to get a book. Okay, let's do this one. 5 up, 3 down, and 15 up. So in displacement, how you how far you are from your uh, home, the initial initial point. So five up, so plus five, minus three and fifteen. It's gonna be what? Seventeen, yes. So seventeen what? Up or down? Up seventeen up. That will be your displacement. And then you divide by two, you will get the velocity. If you want to find the speed, the speed will be the total distance, which is what? 20, 23 divided by two will be the average speed. Okay? And it will be what? Uh, 20, 23 divided by two will be your average speed. Yeah? Uh, no, because uh, because uh, for the distance we we add them up, so uh, fifteen plus five, twenty plus three, twenty three, right? 
And it says textbook 2.1. Mm, let's see, I don't know, you see it from the textbook. No, that's not, uh, that's not you, okay, it's another class. Okay, that's your textbook. Okay, let's try to do this one. So what's here? Average velocity for each length. Okay, so you can read. It's from your book. So don't don't stare because nothing will pop out. So staring doesn't help. So you go from here. First run, you go to B. That's your displacement, A, B. Okay, you can call that the x-axis here, so plus, minus. So your displacement, delta x, equals 50, right? Um, how long does it take? 20, 24, right? So time elapsed is 24 seconds. So by definition, your average velocity it's a displacement divided by the time elapsed. That's going to be a little bit less than uh, 2. How much you get? Uh -huh. 2.0? Okay, so 2.1. Um, thank you. Meter per second. What about on her way back? She takes twice the time. So, what's the displacement when she's coming back? So, A to B is the same, but with a mm -hmm. minus, right? So that was a minus because I'm moving to the left, and here the time is twice, so it's going to be a uh, 40. Eight. So it's going to be what? She's, she's tired. A one, one, minus one point something. Negative one. Negative one uh, meter per second. Okay. That will be the average velocity. There was a minus, meaning left is, is uh, negative. Okay. Tricky question. What's going to be the average velocity for the entire swim? Yeah, zero. Zero. Because you go back to the same place. So displacement is zero. And velocity only depends on the displacement. So it's going to be zero. Is that clear? The average speed, that will be the total distance. So that's going to be uh, 50 plus 50 divided by the total time, which is 24 plus uh, 48. That will be your average speed. But the average velocity, weirdly, it's going to be zero. Uh, the average speed is the total distance. So you, you go back and forth. Total distance is 50, total time is 24 plus 48. And I think I, I skipped something, no? I'm missing one example here. Well, anyway, it doesn't... I'm missing one slide. It's fine, it's okay. Okay, so far so good? So... So when uh, confused what?
No, because it's the total distance over the total time. So it takes you 24 seconds to come here and then 48 seconds to go back because it says she then takes twice that time to swing casually, casually, casually uh, back. Okay, so total distance over total time. Is that clear? Because the average velocity is the total displacement over total time. And you go back to the same place, so displacement is zero. Okay, if you go back to the same place, the displacement is zero. But not the distance. And velocity, velocity depends on the displacement. Velocity by definition is just a definition. Velocity is displacement over time. Okay? And of course, you need to uh, go over your book. You all have your book. You know, it doesn't matter if it's uh, college physics or, or physics. And as long as it's algebra based physics, it's all good. Is it 48 to go, um, to go back and forth? Uh, no, no. It's uh, 24 seconds to go one way, 48 to go the other way. Oh, because she's not, she doesn't go back at the same. Yes. Oh. Because it says here, uh, she, she it say casually, so she means she's tired. So she take twice the time. Okay? Yes? What's the symbol for displacement? D displacement, uh, it depends if it's on the x-axis, it's going to be delta x, which is final position minus initial position. If it's along the y-axis, it's going to be delta y, so final position minus initial position. And if it's in uh, three dimension or two dimension, here we can say uh, a, go a to b, you go a, b, and you put a little arrow here to say it's a vector. To find average velocity for the entire swing, it would be delta x over 2. So it's going to be the, the total displacement over time. Final position is zero. So you, st so you have your number line here, x. That's your zero. So final position is zero minus initial position is zero over the total time, 24 plus 48. So that's going to be zero. OK. Yes. Yeah. This one? Average velocity is zero because by definition, the average velocity is the change in position divided by the change in time. So change in position is the final position minus the initial position divided by the time elapsed. You start here, your position is zero. You go for a walk or a swim, and then you go back. So the final position is zero. So zero minus zero is going to be zero. So by definition, the average velocity is the change in position divided by time. So you go back to the same place. OK? If you go back to the same place, your displacement is zero. Point. Go here, I go to a. The library, I come back here at the same place, my displacement is zero. It, it's just by definition. Here? But it's just on the way. So f one way. Yeah, so that's one way here. Here it's the other way to the left. And the total thing is zero. Right? Make sure you, you use your textbook so you can go over speed, velocity, distance, displacement, okay? At least there is another book that I mentioned. It's called the SAT Physics Princeton Review, which is also good. So what's happening here? Well, uh, you have the speed versus time. Is the speed constant or is it increasing? Increasing. So that means you have an axe. 
acceleration, you are speeding up, right? And you know that when you are doing a run here, I suppose it's football, not sure, I think it's football. So he's running, right? So at, at the beginning, it's, it's easy to go faster, right? And then there is so much faster that you can go. And then you're gonna move at a constant speed. You cannot go faster forever. So you see the speed is increasing, but it increases at a slower and slower and slower rate. And here you have your top speed. So we're gonna see that the acceleration during that time between speed is zero and the top speed is 31.5, the acceleration will be the change in speed over time, okay? For now, we don't talk about direction yet, but just to give you an idea, the average acceleration, the yeah, average acceleration, not talking about direction yet, will be the change in velocity over the change in time. So how fast he, he is getting faster. So every second, he's increasing the speed by 31.5 feet per second, okay? So we talk about position, we talk about velocity, displacement, distance. Now we're gonna talk about acceleration, okay? So make sure you go over your board. So let's talk about something um, conceptual. So if you are taking the MCAT, you love those tricky questions because there is not much math, but it's conceptual. Conceptual questions are always harder than the algebraic uh, equation. So what's going on here? Is, is he what? Accelerating, spinning up. Do you all agree with that? So we take a picture um, every same interval of time. So during that time here is covering that much distance and the distance cover during the same time is increasing. So for example, if you start from that position, go to this position B, you have the displacement delta X. The displacement is positive or negative? Positive, plus and minus. And then what about the velocity? Which way it's moving? Right. Right. So the velocity will be positive. Do you agree with that? It's not going to be constant. So we're going to talk about an instantaneous velocity at a given time. Okay, we will be able to find the velocity at a given time, the position on the number line at a given time. And we can even define here the initial position. So that will be my number line here, x. So at a given time, he or she, I don't know what it is, has a velocity v, and that will be the position here. Yes. Okay, so so in that case, the velocity will be equal to the speed. Now the acceleration. So he's accelerating because there is a thrust. Okay, there is something pushing it. Where is the acceleration? Where is the force? To the right. So the acceleration is to the right. What matters for the acceleration is not which way you are going, it's where is the force. The thrust is to the right, okay? Because what's happening, you push on the floor, the floor is pushing back on you, so it's the floor pushing you. But it's for him or her running. It's not to the right, it's straight up. Yeah, but you're running relative to the ground. So we talk, you're right, so relative to the ground. So I take my frame of reference on the ground. So the number line is on the ground, right? So what's happening here? Yes, you're right, what you say is right. So X position, so it's, it's uh, slowing down, yes? Okay, so A, start from A here, B for example. So delta X is still positive, yes? Even though it's slowing down, it's still positive. Which way it is moving? So well, positive. However, the acceleration depends on the force. 
there is a force that is uh, slowing it down. So where is the force? To the left, so the acceleration will be negative. Okay? So here it's something going in a circular motion. There is an acceleration. I, I don't want to talk about it too much, but you see, let's say the B here is moving at a constant speed. Do you think the velocity is constant? The speed is constant, but the velocity is constantly changing. So the velocity is in this direction, and then in that direction, and then in that direction, that direction, that direction. Yeah. So, of course, if you go back to the same place, the average velocity is zero, you are high. The displacement is zero, you are high. But you see that the velocity is constantly changing direction. So in that case, there will be an acceleration. We'll, we'll talk about that next time. Okay, don't worry about that. But now let's look at this one. So where is the displacement? To the left. So it's going to be negative. Okay, it's negative. It's moving to the left. So velocity is also negative. The acceleration is negative because he's being pushed to the left however what about that he's moving to the left so displacement and velocity between a and b is is negative is to the left what about the acceleration where is the force to the right very good so the acceleration depends on the force has the same direction as the force because acceleration we're going to see is the force per unit mass. So a lot of conceptual equation, even for the MCAT, if you take it, you know, tricky, tricky equation. Okay, so let's let's do the definition. Uh, average acceleration. Acceleration is a vector. It will be equals to by definition, the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time. Yes. This one? Yeah. Oh, because I, I, it should be in my Dropbox now. It's just because sometimes you have it. Sometimes I, Yes, you're right. You're right. I just got inspired and had that. So yes, it's true. So average acceleration by definition is the final velocity minus the initial velocity. So let let me get uh, make it tricky now. Okay. So let's say uh, if if I drop that pen, is it moving at a constant speed or what? It's speeding up. Where is the acceleration? Down, and the force is down, same direction. What about if I do this on the way to the top? Is it moving, velocity is positive or negative? Positive. But is it spinning up or slowing down? Slowing down. So where is the acceleration? Down, always, always down, because gravity is always pulling down. So I will try to trick you all. It's a, a typical tricky equation. Look what's happening here. Slowing down, stop, spinning up. At the top, what's happening at the top? Stop. So the velocity is zero. Can I say the velocity is zero? Uh, the acceleration is zero? No, because gravity is always pulling on it. So the acceleration due to gravity is always down because gravity is always down. So it's like, I want to go up. No, 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 I want you to go down. No, 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 I stop uh, spinning up. See how it works? So velocity and acceleration are not the same thing. Acceleration depends on the force. Yes. Uh, it's a typo, thank you. Thank you. V final minus V initial. 
unit should be meter per second per second. So how fast it's getting faster. So every second by how much the speed or the velocity is going to increase or decrease. Okay, let's try to do this one. So it has no, it's 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 at rest when um, you start your stopwatch, and here it has a final velocity. The time elapsed is thirty seconds. So find the acceleration. I'm missing one slide. One slide disappear. I have to find it. What is it? So what do you think? Should just uh, eight? What? Two eighty? Oh, don't convert. Right? Keep keep the same unit. Keep the same unit. Okay. So v final minus v initial divided by the time. Keep, don't don't convert. We we're gonna keep with a kilometer per hour per second. So it's gonna be what divided by the time elapsed thirty. So the acceleration is about yeah eight eight point three. Let's say eight kilometer per hour per second because this is kilometer per hour and this is second so every second it's going faster by eight kilometer per hour every second okay it increases its speed by eight okay it's it's a first okay pushing forward so the acceleration will be this way so if i have if I look at my slide here, you see that um, at t equals zero, it was at rest. There's a force pushing to the right. After one second, it's going at eight. After two seconds, it's going at 16. After three seconds, how fast is going? 24 kilometer per hour. After four seconds, it's gonna be 32, thank you. Okay, so you can see, you can even find what's the equation for that. So you have V, V, the velocity, equals 8 times the time. Okay, so at T, at T equals 0, the velocity is 0. At T equals 1, it's going to be 8. At T equals 2, it's going to be 16, t equals 3 is going to be 24, and so forth, and so on. And you see that every second, the velocity increases by 8. So that's the definition of a linear equation between velocity and time. It's like a proportion. Okay? So if you are, you know, you used to y equals mx, it's the same thing, right? So you have velocity and time. And the velocity increases at a constant rate. So one step of one here, you have a step of eight. So this is kilometer per hour, and this is second. So every second, the speed increases by eight. Yes? Okay, so how fast is it going after five seconds? 40, yes. So 8 times 5 is 40 kilometer per hour, right? Think of that as uh, um, 8 is like how much money you make per hour. So after 5 hours, you're going to make 8 times 5, 40 dollars. So because Every second you increase by eight. So here zero and then plus eight and then plus eight and then plus eight and then plus eight. So eight plus eight plus eight plus eight plus eight is eight times five. 
So it increases at a constant uh, rate. Yes? Yes. Okay. So what if now, instead of having a starting from rest, you start at 50? So you start with 50 and you increase by 8. So it's going to be what? After 5 seconds, so 50 plus 8 plus 8. 8 plus 8 plus 8 plus 8 is going to be 90, right? So it's going to be 50 plus 8 times 5. It's going to be 90 kilometers per hour. Okay? So it's like you're making $8 an hour. You work for 5 hours and your boss is so nice. It gives you, he gives you $50 to begin with. So this, this is what we call the y-intercept. So if you remember y equals mx plus b, so y will be your velocity, 8 is the rate, plus uh, 50. That's a kinematic equation. Okay? So here we're talking about a speed. So speed is... Uh, distance over time, so kilometer per hour. Over second will mean every second what's going to happen. Zero. E exactly. Question. Yes. So remember, uh, do.